guys, welcome to episode number three of the Big Head Pod here on the Dub Network. And today's guest is a good buddy of mine, a good neighbor of mine, Mr. Mike Adams. Mike, pleasure to have you on the show today. And first thing we going to talk about, we were, uh, as we were coming up today, is we were talking about kids and youth sports and everything else. And I know that we talk about injuries, right? Have you had to deal with those kind of stuff as a kid with the kids like you're dealing with now? Um, not on the baseball side. Well, I take that back. I've had a couple kids, you know, kind of over usage as far as throwing too much, stuff like that, where their shoulders or arms kind of start feeling a little fatigued. Um, so we'll, we'll just kind of back them off a little bit and, and turns out that it's nothing. Um, but on the soccer side with my daughter, we've had, you know, I've seen, especially with her, she's had a couple foot injuries where she's missed uh, multiple months, you know, so we've, we've had to monitor her on stuff like that. It's gross, you think gross stuff? Because she's how old? She is 15, so yeah. she actually, uh, it was during her 13-year-old season and her 14-year-old season. Um, and it was, uh, you know, with the soccer shoes, you know, you have, I mean, for those that have played soccer and seen the shoes, there's basically no insole. You know, it's a little paper-thin insole. And uh, with her, she has high arches, so it just kind of collapses, collapses, collapses. I'm sorry, guys. Uh -oh. I'm sorry. <clears throat> the scratch of your neck. Again? Yeah. It's all right. Is it gonna scratch my neck again? Yeah. You sure? Yeah. We'll find out, right? Let's see, let's see. start over, Ted. Yeah. No, sorry. <laughs> no, yeah. I'm sorry. I know. I'm, I'm the pain in the ass. That's my job. You could have waited until I was like 30 minutes in and then done it. <laughs> Do That's I, true. So, what part? You want to start over again all the way? Yeah, yeah. if you don't mind. Just okay. make it clean. All right. <laughs> we'll pick up somewhere in there. All right, I'll be good. All right. Guys, welcome to episode three of the Big Head Pod. Gosh, dog, I see I screwed up. <laughs> see, Ted? Damn it. <sighs> All right, we'll do this again. Guys, welcome to episode three of the Big Head Pod here on the Dub Network. And today's guest is a good friend of mine, a neighbor of mine, Mr. Mike Adams. So, Mike, I know they can't see your crutches over there, but tell us about what you're dealing with right now. So I am dealing with uh, my 14th orthopedic surgery. Uh, I had what's called a high tibial osteotomy on my, my right knee. Um, it's uh, basically it was that between my choices were partial knee replacement or to have this done to uh, avoid uh, or putting off knee replacement for as long as possible. Um, so basically on the inside of my knee, it's bone on bone, very arthritic. So it's basically a realignment to uh, put the pressure back on the middle to outside part of my knee to hopefully put the off knee replacement for another 10 years or so. So we'll see, uh, you know, I'm seven weeks out of post-surgery, so we'll see uh, see how this ha how this goes. So it's inevitable, like mine, you're gonna need a knee. It's inevitable, yes, I've, I've been told you, it, it's I need a in the partial. future. I, I need a partial on mine, that just, it, as long as it doesn't interfere with my everyday life. And I'm sure, I guess, with it must have been bothering you. Was it something that bothered you even coming through high school into college and stuff, too? Or is it just... No, it just this is actually more of a recent thing. So uh, I've had other surgeries in back in 2006 and seven. I had three knee microfractures. So I had two on my left, one on my right, and I'm end up missing the whole 07 season because of it. Um, and at that time, I thought basically, you know, because it was three and 11 months. So I had one, and then like five months later, I had the second one. Then like four months later, I had another one. Um, and at that time, I thought basically my career was over just because it was just a reoccurring thing. We couldn't figure out why I kept, why I kept tearing. So it was like left, right, left. Um, but eventually, I ended up kind of getting a hold of it and, and, and moving past it. But, uh, but yeah, now this recently, you know, I had a meniscus surgery in, in December because I tore my meniscus back in last June, and I was just trying to put it off because of the kids, not... kids' baseball. You know, I was like, all right, I'll wait till off season to have my surgery. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, this is just, I mean, I, it, basically I couldn't golf. You know, walking on the golf course, I, you know, going up and down the hills and stuff, I, you know, I, I, by the end of the round, I was toast. That flap, I had the same issue. That's just, I mean, when you're, when we're 20, 25 years old, we don't think about how our body's gonna feel at 40, 45. You just don't, yeah, let me think about that, how it'll be. And I've got the same issue. I think it's just 
probably you, it's the, the, the constant pounding on that front leg. Mine is just not torquing, and those, finally everything just giving out. And I've, the issues and, and stuff, it's just, like you said, if it doesn't interfere with that, you can do it. But it's, like I said, that flap gets caught, and now you're, it's, it's tough, you know, especially with kids trying, you want to be involved, but now what do I do? Because you have a total knee, you're going to be out six to nine months before you're able to. Yeah. And that's, and that's the thing people don't get, people don't understand, you know, the, I mean, our bodies can only carry so much, right? I mean, what other stuff do you deal with? Shoulder stuff, elbow stuff? So I've had, uh, sheesh, I've had one, two, three, three shoulder surgeries. I've had a rib removed from TOS. I've had a, uh, I tore a ligament in my thumb, taking a damn car seat out of a car. Uh, and this was back when I was with Philly. So it, was, it happened in the off season. So I had to basically my whole off season was shot because I was recovering from a thumb surgery. Uh, I've had a sports hernia surgery, uh, ankle surgery. Let's see what else. <laughs> <laughs> Inguinal hernia <laughs> surgery. Uh, you name it, it's, it's been worked on, man. So, bicep tenodesis. So the shoulder stuff, you're able to throw now, <clears throat> play catch, and, or? Limited, limited. I, I, I probably need another cleanup of some yeah. sort. You know, playing, so after I retired, a couple of buddies asked me to go play softball with them out in South Lake. And, you know, when you jump out there, your, your natural juices start flowing and competitiveness. So I'm playing left field, somebody tags up. I'm like, all right, I'm about to shoot him out. So I throw it, and my shoulder <laughs> just absolutely just pops, and, and I drop down. That's the first time, like, of all the shoulder injuries I've ever had, that's the first time that it, mm -hmm. I actually popped. And uh, since then, I haven't had no, I haven't gone back to the doctor or anything like that. But you know, I I can play a little bit of catch, but I can't like sit there with a high school age student or something or a high school age player. And fire yeah. away, fire away. I can yeah. do it for a little while, but then the next day I'm gonna pay for it. Yeah, I don't even. That's what that's what I've done. I've I've got a partial tear. I can I know what my limits are. I can play catch to yeah. an extent. I mean, maybe a hundred feet, and then it's uh, give me a fungo because I told them, you know the kids. You said you want a long toss, and I said nope. It's it'll go, and I know if I do let it go like that, it's it's gonna go with it. Yeah. And it'll be done. And that's and that's the thing. Now you you actually we actually process a little bit more because it takes away from. Right, being able to play catch with the kids. That's what you, that's what I wanted to be able to do with because my as a kid I had two older brothers and they both had rotator cuff surgery. And this was thirty years ago, and that's when they had to open you up. And I remember my oldest brother, the, f the first time wanting to play catch, he couldn't throw from me to you, it hit the TV. That's how bad that's he, he lost all that feeling in it. And I was like that I, as soon as I saw that I get there and going, Nope, I'm not doing that because so I went moved to the outfield. I always tell people the harder they hit it, the farther back I wanted to get. So I mean it's and it's, but that's why I just do front toss. I don't, I don't throw batting practice to them anymore. You know, there's no point. There's... Yeah, so I though, I mean, I, I coach an 11 year old team and I, I do throw batting practice, but it's, I can't throw like our normal throwing. Mm -hmm. I have to kind of throw darts. Yeah. You know, I have everything shortened up, throw here, throw here. So now I got elbow pains from, <laughs> from, from trying to throw darts. Uh, so it's just, you know, I compensate one injury to kind of, Get another one, I guess yeah. you could say. And you try and you, uh, it, it's not something where you can just go out and fire it up and go. You, it, it takes 10, 15 minutes to get going, but yeah. you're right. And, and I realize too now, wait, I need to stretch it because if not, you, what, you said you wake up the next day, I can't pick my arm up. I just, I want to be able to, like you said, play golf, do something. And if it interferes with that, that's when it gets, get it out of my way. So, you, I mean, that's, you see a lot more nowadays with injuries. Are kids, are they not as, as, tough is it more of a are they not I don't remember getting hurt at 11 12 13 unless it was like a broken bone or something yeah. do, you, do you no I mean but I, I think also when we were younger everything was different you know we weren't playing year-round baseball. at least I wasn't I wasn't playing year-round baseball I was playing you know nowadays you I mean my kids now we play 70 games a year you know and that's on the low end yeah. compared to some of some of these other teams also you know, where when I was in, when I was younger, I was playing 20 games a year, maybe 25 at tops. Yeah. Um, you know, but then I was playing basketball also. I was playing more basketball than anything. You know, but it was just a lot easier to pick up a basketball, go find a court, and, and run around. And I, and I grew up as a basketball player. Um, you know, I went to college on a basketball scholarship. Um, but yeah, but now I, I think there's so much. Uh, you know, with all the travel sports and select sports and stuff like that, it's, it's just so it's become so. Uh, specialize on what they do 
that is year round, year round. Their buys take a pounding, a pounding, a pounding. And, and <clears throat> at, at this age, they don't understand the, the things you have to do to maintain your body. You know, we, we learned in, in pro ball, I mean, even in college, I didn't know that, hey, if I go through, uh, you know, a game, I need to come back and do my, my workouts and my, my shoulder exercise and stuff like that. I didn't realize, I didn't figure that out until, until pro ball. Mm -hmm. You know, and then once I, once I learned that, my arms started feeling better and, 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 you know, I was recovering easier. And as much as I try to tell these kids, hey, you need to go do this and do that, they're kids. They're not going to go back and then they're going to go home and play their video games. They're not going to go home and go do shoulder exercises, band work or what stuff to, uh, to maintain their body breaking down. So why, so as, as I said, that's what I was going to ask you about basketball. So was, that was the avenue. How did you end up with, where, the, where did you go to school, multi-sport? So I, growing up when I was younger, it was baseball. Yeah. And then once I got to around junior high, I found basketball and I've realized, I figured out who Michael Jordan was. So around sixth grade or so, you know, Michael Jordan was kind of, that, mm -hmm. it was that era. Um, and basketball became my prior, prior, priority sport, I guess you could say. Um, so all through, I mean, I, always, I kept playing baseball, but yeah. basketball was something we did every single day. Um, and, you know, in high school, I kind of figured out, you know, I was, I was pretty good at basketball. Um, ended up getting a full ride to uh, Texas A&M Kingsville uh, to play basketball. And I had the option to kind of play baseball also, but I, but I had no, no scholarship. Baseball. In baseball at all, like anywhere. I, I mean, and it might have been also because I signed kind of early for basketball. Mm -hmm. But uh, but I still, but I mean, I did I did well in, in high school baseball. But when I went to Kingsville, there was kind of an agreement. Hey, if, if you want to play baseball, you can play baseball afterwards. Um, but after my freshman year of basketball, it was spring break, and I was like, I'm not gonna play baseball. I'm gonna go spring break, man. I'm gonna go. I'm tired of, of sports right now. I need a break. Uh, so after after my freshman year, the college the coach that recruited me. He ended up leaving. Mm -hmm. Another coach came in. He didn't really, you know, we, we I, I wasn't as good in a college basketball player. I was a high school basketball player. And, you know, he didn't, we didn't see, I guess, eye to eye a little bit. And I, I by mid season, uh, my sophomore year, I was like, you know what, I'm tired of this. Like, we don't get along, I'm gonna transfer somewhere else. Um, and that summer after my sophomore year, some guys that I played high school with, you know, in, in the area, mm -hmm. invited me to go play summer ball with them. And a couple of them played at Kingsville also. Okay. And uh, one of the guys, his dad was actually the college coach. So I, uh, I went to play summer ball with them and I was actually, I'd, I'd already agreed to go play basketball at East Texas Baptist. Okay. But like a week before school started, I decided, you know what, I'm, a, I'm, a, I'm not gonna go play basketball. I'm gonna stay here, play baseball. And from there, it just kind of all went from there. Did you hit a growth spurt any, any time where you grew like Two feet, three feet, or something at once. Because I mean, I did, I did. So after my, so I was always a really small guy. Yeah, you know, I was small and skinny. And uh, after my freshman year, I hit like a five, six inch growth spurt. And and the good thing was, I had, I, I was very coordinated. You know, I got all my coordination, worked on my coordination. So when I hit that growth spurt, it all went with me. So it wasn't like I was just kind of fumbling all over the place or anything like that. Uh, but after my freshman year, I hit a, a huge growth spurt, and I mean, I was still skinny, but yeah, I outgrew everybody, um, and 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 that that was a big part. I mean, because I'm the biggest person in my whole family. Like we go yeah. to a family reunion, I'm the tallest person there. Yeah. You know, so I'm I'm the the outlier in the Adams family. Yeah, got you. So everybody else has got that Asian height, and you got that that yeah. <laughs> yeah. stand out above. Did you, you know, that's what we were talking about. You like said with with your daughter at that 13 to 15, where they're growing, and you have those. Did were you dealing with any of those growing pains? As far like you said with your knees, I know you've had issues with them. <sighs> I don't. I don't ever remember having. I mean, the only only time I remember being having an injury or being hurt was in junior high, and I had this tightness behind my my knee where I couldn't bend my knee all the way. Yeah. Um, and that would just lasted a couple of weeks, but that's the only time that I remember anything like being hurt, other than being like a jammed finger or a ball hit me in the in the finger and kind of like cracking my finger one time. Yeah. Other than that, I don't remember having you know throwing pains or anything. You know. Anything like that. I mean, it's normal soreness, but never where I was like I couldn't, I couldn't participate. Yeah, maybe it was a mentality. You know, we had you, you talk about sports specific now, but from six or seven all the way into high school. I mean, I grew up. We had seasons, so in the fall I couldn't play baseball. I was playing soccer. Winter I was doing hockey. So you had those and the muscle groups. You said are using basketball. It's all different stuff to able to help you coordination wise. I mean, you were what? How tall are you? Six what? Six five. Six five. Okay. So I mean, it's. 
And that's tough to, I mean, people don't know, but that's what I think probably what point guards are now in the NBA six, you know, <laughs> that are average height, yeah. you know, and that, that doesn't seem that, that big when you watch it on TV, but how these guys are able to move and how fast and then be able to carry that, the, the weight on the body. Um, but like you said, we just, our bodies are made to only carry so much. Yeah. And then it gets to a point where our body just shuts down. I think ours are starting to shut down now. Um, and it's, you just hope that it lasts long enough. You know, and people go, well, yeah, are you going to, who knows how my body's going to be? Because we didn't, nutrition wise, we didn't eat right, yeah. did we? I mean, but, even when we were in the big leagues, I mean, I remember being in Milwaukee and you go in the, I mean, it was a freaking candy store. Yeah. You know, I mean, you asked for something to eat, we had, uh, a Philly cheesesteak, we had a burger, we had a chicken sandwich, you could make regular sandwiches, but then you have on the side, you have all your candy bars, you had the soda machine, you had chips. You know, it wasn't until, shoot man, probably eight years in that they kind of started doing the whole nutrition type thing. And it was just the beginning of it too. So, I mean, you know, you might have one organization that, or your, your organization, when we came to the Rangers, that's when, you know, they kind of started doing it. And I go to the Philly and they basically starved us. You know, so, uh, so yeah, I mean, it was kind of the beginning. I mean, you go, you go somewhere else in another clubhouse, they're feeding you Panda Express pizzas and stuff like that. So, depending know. on where you went, you had an out burger on the West Coast or what. <laughs> yeah. And that was, and you, like you said, cold beer or something you wanted to now. Mm -hmm. It's, and I think, you think guys are too lean these days? My guys are getting hurt more and more. I mean, think about it. When, when we were, when you were pitching, right, you had starters were going six seven eight innings now right they're they're groomed for what five yeah yeah I mean, I mean there's a lot of factors that play into it i think i mean i think like we like we talked about you know now these guys are you know i mean hell these guys are born in, in the mid 90s now you know i mean out in mid 90s we, we were graduating high school mm -hmm. um you know but so they're they're part of this travel ball era you know so they've they've since the age of 13 they've been playing the 100 games plus mm -hmm. a year so that's a lot of wear and tear that they've, they've built on. I mean, heck, half of them are already in their first, second Tommy John surgery before they even get to, to 19 years old. Um, so I think it's just a, a different era of, of, of athletes where the, these guys now have played so much baseball um, that I think that's part of it. I mean, you know, maybe the, the leanness of them also, they don't have enough, enough grease and, and, and to, to yeah. keep them lubed up a little bit. Um, but I, th I think there's there's a lot of different factors that are that are coming into uh, all these injuries, you know. And now it's it's everything's <clears throat> everything's tailored to throw as hard, throw hard, throw hard, throw hard. You know, there there there's you know what, what is that drive line? They're basically they're teaching they're not teaching mechanic true mechanics to to be a, a Greg Maddox style style pitcher where we want you to last and locate, locate, locate. Now it's let's try to throw 95 plus and blow by people. They don't. Is that? So I mean, is that is that hurting the game? You think they're not learning? But so basically, what you're saying is they're not being taught how to pitch. They're just throwers. A lot. I mean, a lot. Some. 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 I mean, don't get me wrong. There, there are pitchers. You mm -hmm. know, I mean, even some of these guys that throw hard are pitchers. But I just think that they're 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 being a lot of them are being tailored to throw. As, a, I mean, your body's not made to throw 100 miles an hour. You know, I mm -hmm. mean, you know, very, very few people. I mean, people say, hey, Nolan Ryan, he pitched. For, you know, 24 years, and he, he was able to throw 200 pitches an inning. He's an outlier. You know, not everybody's tailored to do that. Well, yeah, you ha you you have your Justin Verlanders, your your Nolan Ryan's, uh, your Zach Greinke's. You know, guys that are able to to play late into their their you know their age, whatever. But when you look at it overall, I mean, it's it's not. I mean, you have outliers. Yes, there's guys that can do it, but it's very few numbers. If you look at the percentage of players that are able to do it, it's not a high percentage. You know, I mean, yes, you can compare th those guys, but it's not very many that can do it. I was well, I was looking at something on I think Facebook the other day. Bartolo Colon looks like he was trying to. He was saw him throwing. He's probably still playing the Dominican at 50 years old, whatever. Probably, but he, but when he first came up was at mid 90s Cleveland, right? Mm -hmm. he, he was throwing 100. He was throwing yeah. just gas, mm -hmm. and now he's throwing 84, and he's learned to to pitch as opposed to just be a thrower. I think Maddox was quoted as guys when they get in jams, they try to throw harder. He goes, "I tried to locate better." Try to locate better, mm -hmm. and that you don't you don't see that. But now guys too, and I mean they're fully armored. Dudes are throwing balls, you know, up up and in, and it's just, I, I don't know. You know, I just I just look at it. Maybe I don't know. Maybe the 
he said the guys that are throwing hard, maybe the, the life expectancy of the arm is is it dwindling now because it's just hey dude, just go throw three just throw 10 fastballs 100 miles an hour and you're done for the night yeah. i mean <laughs> yeah i mean I, I i could be it also i mean and now you know back i mean just hell just a few years ago i mean you look at the money in baseball now i mean if you can put together five good years you can make the a, a, enough money to last you a lifetime mm -hmm. especially with the with the way contracts are now so i mean if you can go out there and I mean, now you don't have to play the 10 years or the eight years, whatever it may be. Uh, now you can play a, a good solid five to six seasons and, and make a, a, a good amount of money to, to set, you, set you for life. So, you know, that could be a part of it also. Um, but, yeah, I mean, it, it's just a completely, it's, it's become a completely different game. I mean, is it, uh, I mean, when, so you were coming out, you were throwing, what would you throw a year? How many innings would you, would you average in a year? I was throwing... 70 a year, something like that, you know? So, mean, uh, and that was out of a setup role, you know? So, I mean, I, I was a one-inning guy coming for the seventh, eighth inning, whatever it was. Early in my career was seventh inning. There, at the, you know, once I kind of established myself, it was an eighth inning role, um, you know, but I was also a guy that was, I was good to go every single day, you know? So I, I was throwing three in a row, take a day, day or two off, go another two in a row, take a day off, and another three in a row. Um, and that's not even including the the up and downs where you don't even get in the game. Yeah. You know, so <clears throat> you know that uh that all that that all adds up, you know. Oh yeah. Um people and, don't see that. They don't see you in the bullpen. Oh yeah, he's getting loose and then you throw through warm up, you're throwing thirty pitches just warming up, right? Yeah. And then all right, now you're sitting, you gotta do it again and those what's it like? What that what so what the, that mentality of Hey, Mike, go get there. Hey, call down to the bullpen. Hey, get Adams loose, right? Okay, team score. You're throwing, right? Team scores four runs. All right, sit him down. All right, so then you got to go sit, and then and they come back. Next offense comes out. They score three more runs. All right, hey, get Mike back up. So what, what goes through your mind when they're telling you this stuff? So early on in your career, you don't know how to handle it. You don't, you, all you know is fired up, fired up, and then it's like, all right, get down. And then fired up, fired up. So as you, as you kind of start going through, you know, as you – learn the system, I guess you could say, you know, you kind of figure out, okay, how do I, how do I pace myself? How many do I got to throw to, uh, to get loose? Um, and then I figured out a routine to get my body loose without having to make so many throws. Um, and that, that was a huge game changer for me, you know, so, so early on in my career, it was kind of more of, hey, you know, right around the fifth inning, kind of get up, do a couple stretches, sit back down and wait, you know, as soon as the phone rings, all right, let's get up and let's go throw. Um, and then a couple years in, I kind of figured out a, a routine where I, I, I kind of with the heavy ball, right around the fifth inning, I get up, I stretch, I get, I, mean, I made sure I was, what, what I used to like calling it, was lubricated. Mm -hmm. You know, I had a little sweat going. Um, you know, I was loose. Or once the phone rang and my name got called, I just needed four or five throws and I was yep. good to go. You know, so I learned how to save my bullets. Yep. You know, um, you know, but. Uh, yeah, I mean, when, it, when it's kind of up and down, up and down, up and down, uh, you, you know, it, it, and until you set a routine or figure out a routine, it, it becomes taxing. I mean, like you said, I mean, I might throw 25 pitches in the seventh inning, sit back down, all right? Eighth inning, hey, they scored a couple runs, all right, let's get back up, sit back down. You know, it, it can be a little bit of a roller coaster ride sometimes, um, but you just got to, you know, as, as, you get, as you go a little bit longer, you kind of start figuring out. Hey, how do we how do we how do we manage this? How do we how do we do this where we don't have to throw so many pitches? Um, and, and to me, I always try to tell guys find a routine, find a routine, find a routine. Did you have somebody that 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 was there <clears throat> and established whoever was closing for you for wh where you were playing? Did they kind of help you in, in that process of just saying, hey, don't be because right? You said you're a young kid, right? What, how old were you when you made your big league debut? Twenty four. So you're up there and your drones run, and there, I'm sure there's veteran guys that are like, hey, man. You just, you yeah. know, save it. Like you said, save your bullets. And you're just <laughs> everything you can, right? I mean, is that are there guys that were that helped you along the way, or was it something you figured out on your own? So, my first, my, my rookie year, I didn't, <clears throat> I didn't have the the true guidance that I probably needed mm -hmm. my rookie year in, in the bullpen. Um, it was just kind of like, hey, let's let him. I mean, I don't remember ever saying other than my pitching coach being like, hey, slow down a little bit. You know, Billy Castro would be like, hey, slow down a little bit. You know, calm down. Ammo. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> you know, so. Uh, but once I went to San Diego, after I got traded to San Diego, I had Trevor there. 
And uh, he was a, a real big person that I learned from. You know, I, I, I always was kind of watching what he was doing. I mean, hell, he's a Hall of Fame closer. You know, my first time being around somebody of that stature. So <clears throat> I wanted to kind of learn off of him and see how he did things and how he, he went about his business. Uh, so I was, I was always kind of taking mental notes. Okay, this is how he did this. This is how he did this. Um, and, and I just kind of applied that in my own way. You know, took some of, some of the things he did and kind of some of the things I learned to kind of put them together and kind of made my routine th that way. Because Trevor didn't throw very hard. No. So, and, you, and you threw hard. So, I mean, did, so that, when you, looking at that, watching him throw, did that kind of in the back of your mind too go, maybe I don't need to? Granted, because there's some times where you need to, you need to hump up and, and let it go. But, I mean, where would you sit, 94, 96 in that area? And then Yeah, so early on in my career, I was, uh, uh, I was sitting 94, 95, and I'll top out 96, 97. Um, but going, to San, going back to San Diego, my first year there, I had Greg Maddox, who was a locker down for me. I had Trevor. Um, I had uh, Jake Peavy, you know, that, to watch pitch. So I, I used to always, my stuff was very similar to Peavy's. So whenever he'd pitch, I kind of, I'd really pay attention because, you know, we had the kind of similar fastballs, the sliders, um, and I'd, I'd kind of watch on, on how he went. Uh, so, I, so he was kind of my scouting report a little bit whenever he pitched. Um, but just going back to like Maddox and, and Trevor, you know, Maddox was in his last year, I'll take that back, he was in his second last year of his career. And, uh, you know, so I was always, you know, when he was, so it was me, Michael Barrett, Maddox. And uh, so I would always, whenever they were talking, I would, I would sit there and I'd just listen. You know, kind of take, take mm -hmm. away, take away, take away you know, on, on what he was doing. And you're going back to what you said about uh, in certain jams, what he was talking about. Well, he would always be like, hey, the louder they get, the softer you throw. And I'm like, oh, okay, I get it. Because, you know, yeah, I guess their adrenaline going. The louder, the louder the crowd gets, you know, they kind of get pumped up, pumped up, slow it down on them. So I'm like, okay, I like that. I like that. You know, so so I had a, I, my first year in San Diego. I really had two guys that I could kind of listen to and, and watch and, and really learn from how they went about their business. And, and you know, you're talking about Maddox, who was I think at the time like 41, 42, you know, throwing 85 miles an hour and just dealing. Mm -hmm. You know, so it, so it kind of it kind of made me realize, you know, what you don't have to gas everybody, gas everybody. Because I was kind of a stuff guy. I would try, I would try to stuff you. I mean, mm -hmm. I was throwing hard. I'd stuff you. My location. I mean, I could I could throw strikes, but I wasn't able to, to locate, locate, locate. But then after we're kind of watching them, I kind of figured out, okay, just you know, throw your 94 on the edge, keep it on the edge, keep it down, um, and, you know, locate, locate, locate. And, and, and that's when my rec career really took off. And then you, when you need to reach back and let one fly, an 0-2 fastball at 97, you were able to, to yeah. so you learned how to pitch yes. at that moment. Yes. That's yes. What, so that's what I'm, you guys, I don't know if people understand that, how the difference between pitching and throwing is where, like you said, you're learning to pitch. You're, it's like listening and hearing. Yeah, I hear all the stuff, but I was actually listening and watching and learning, right? Because they have, they were moving the balls in and out. I know uh, when, I, when, when I was playing, like uh, Francisco Cordero, so Coco, when he would pitch, he threw hard. So he didn't want a scuff ball. So anytime a ball gets scuffed, he would throw it out. Were you a guy, that would, did you want a scuff ball? I didn't mind it. I learned how to use it. I learned how you, and I learned, that's something I learned from Maddox. Uh, so, so if a ball had a scuff on it, I, 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 I would, I didn't mind it. It, it depending on what I, it depending on the count, I guess, and what I was going to throw. Um, my ball, my fastball moved a lot. Mm -hmm. I had a lot of run on my fastball. So, depending on what I was trying to do, I, and how big the scuff was, if I if I threw it, it would move too mm -hmm. much. So I, it was it would be hard to control. Um, but I. I I learned how to use it. You know, if I, if I was going to throw a sinker, put the scuff on this side, let it let it cut on that way. If I was trying to throw my slider, I'd take the scuff out. Um, change up, I don't mind the scuff. Mm -hmm. um, so it just depended on what pitch I was I was going to throw. And usually, I had my mind made up. Well, well I'll take that back. I never shook a cat. I, I never shook a, a catcher. Mm -hmm. You know, I, I, to, to me, it was to make it easy on myself. I mean, there's a lot of things that go on. You know, so it, the last thing I wanted to do was be thinking about what I was going to throw. So I left it up to the catcher, but like, hey, you call the game, I'll put the ball where you want to put the ball. Um, but I, I was usually in pretty in sync on, hey, I know what he's going to call, mm -hmm. you know, and, and if he didn't call it, I'm like, all right, cool, fine, whatever. Um, so there were times that I might have, you know, he might have called a sinker in, had a big scuff, I just kind of yeah. turned the ball a little bit and get the scuff, <clears throat> excuse me, get the scuff on a different side so it wouldn't have as much run. And then sometimes the ball would stay straight. So. 
uh, you know, when it comes to, when it came to scuffs, I, I didn't mind the scuffs. I, I, I learned how to use them, and I learned, you know, with with the size of the scuff, how much the ball is going to move. People don't know it not, now how that how they use that scuff because it was it helps especially pitchers that the ball likes to move because the guys that throw harder they don't want it. You know, so balls. I don't know how they check them today. I know that, you know, be a scoop at first base, and you know, oh, pitchers yeah. like give me, yeah, I'm with ball that ball, right? The dirt, the ball's out. Yeah, and that's the thing nowadays. I know, they, Pudge used to say because before, remember the gloves used to have the metal rivets mm -hmm. in them. They said Pudge used to take it, his pair of pliers, and pull it up. So when Kenny would pitch, he would, as he was, he would take it and scuff it and throw it right back to him. And now that there's no rivets and gloves anymore, for I think for that sole purpose. So thanks, Pudge, if that was your your doing. <laughs> um, but how much the balls can actually move. I mean, I mean, our kids pick them up, you know, and you look at it, it's got a smiley face on it. And umpires, are, the kids don't know what they're doing with it unless they're actually taught because it'll, it'll get that ball to move a lot, even with, even, st even stickiness, you know? Did you ever use anything, any kind of substance? So I, so I learned from a veteran my rookie year, uh, the, the shaving cream and rosin. So we do. He used the the foam, uh, the foam, uh, like Gillette shaving cream. And I it couldn't. I tried the gel, and the gel would be too sticky. And so I would use the foam, just kind of here, put it on my arms, put it in my hair, and uh, and then just get a little bit of rosin, and just give me a little bit of tackiness. Um, you know, and, and but it wasn't like I said. The, the I, I, I couldn't use. Uh, I couldn't use no kind of pine tar or anything like that. I if it, I just needed a little bit of grip. I didn't need. Sticky, sticky, sticky. I just need a little bit of grip. Because, I mean, what a lot of these people don't understand, these balls are slick. These balls are real slick. You know, and especially with that mud they put on them sometimes. I mean, you know, and you're sweating. It just, you know, speak, speaking with some guys that, that, that were hitters, they were always like, man, I'd rather you be have a little stickiness than, than that ball slip and hit me. Because that's what they wanted. They wanted to make sure you weren't going to hit them. Exactly. <clears throat> and, and I think now... You know, I've never felt a spider tack or anything like that, so I don't know what what that is. Um, but from what I understand, like it's it's some pretty sticky stuff, and people learn how to how to use it and stuff like that. But I, I do think they need to make some sort of universal substance that they can feel the ball. You know, because now we're, I think we're starting to see a lot of guys get hit now. You know, especially at the beginning of the year uh, when, with the whole I think it was the Mets and yeah, and, uh, the Cardinals. Yeah, 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 yeah. You know, and. and you know, I believe, and especially when in the cold. Oh yeah. When it's cold, that ball's real slick. You know, <laughs> uh, and depending on where you're playing, you go to Colorado, it's dry. You go to San Francisco or, or, or San Diego, where it's dry, it becomes a little more difficult. You know, so so different places, you know, it, the, the tackiness is a little bit better than others. Um, but I, I I do think you know for safety purposes, yeah, you got to have something. You gotta have something. Yeah, because when you you know it's cold, and <clears throat> you're allowed to. Hey, yes, umpire, can I blow my hand? That doesn't warm it up very long, right? Uh -huh. You get your finger in there all of a sudden, and you can't you can't feel it. Or yeah, it, it sticks. It, you you blow, it's tacky for a second, but then as soon as like before, by the time you come set, that tackiness is gone. Yeah. Or it's wet too. Like a baseball gets yeah. a little bit wet, and some, mm -hmm. and that's what I think people understand why are these balls running up and in because it's just there's so much friction if they get a grip on it or anything else. It just it sails. Trust me, pitchers aren't the only ones that were that. That do it. Hell, with pine tar and stuff, I would grab. You know, that would have it on there. I grab. Who picks up their bat by the barrel when they're when yeah. they're walking up to the bat, right? You grab it by, or by the handle. You grab it by the by barrel the and you're walking. Up, a little bit of sticky on there, right? Mm -hmm. So I mean, everybody's and you're not cheating, you ain't trying, right? Yeah. And that's and that's the thing. But now it's. I mean, the guys are undressing <clears> on the field, right? They take off your shoe, take off. I mean, we're not flipping sandpaper like Necro, yeah. right? When he. But yeah. it's. Yeah, you're right. Something has to be to be done for a safety issue. If if not, you, know, you said guys are throwing harder and harder. I mean, are you going to back back the mound up even further? Yeah, and that's you know I I think that's kind of where they uh, the whole the whole substance stuff is coming to play. I mean these these pitchers are getting better. Mm -hmm. The pitchers are a lot better than they were you know ten years ago. Um, and I I think you know you know it, part of it is the pitchers are getting better, and part of it is the hitters have changed their way of hitting you know I mean the strikeout and long ball have become what makes you money you know hit me 30 home runs and I'll pay you you know so they're so these hitters are like I'm gonna get paid you know so they're they're, they're okay taking hitting 220 or whatever it may be to hit 30 bombs 40 bombs and and, and get paid that way you know I, I think you know small ball has come out left the game um, 
you know, before it was baseball was a contact sport. Now it's a power sport. Um, so I think that's, you know, I don't think, yes, let's give the pitchers credit for being better, but I don't think the credit is all to the pitchers. I think that's, you know, the hitting, this hitting style has changed tremendously in the game, which has caused the, the, the averages to go down. I mean, it's, it's, you're right. We were, I talked about with that with Jeff Fry um, last episode <clears throat> about just the philosophies that are taught. Um, going back to this, the substance, you think about the substance I use, remember, with footballs, right? The same thing, the people, the same thing. That even basketballs, guys are putting some sort of stuff on. Heck, you pick up a hockey stick. It's got some sort of grip on it because the stuff, the way, the way, the speed of the game has changed tremendously, right? So, that there, like you said, maybe a universal substance that's used over all the sports to be able to, I mean, heck, I'm sitting here trying to grab my fingers. If somebody gave me a baseball right now, it wouldn't be, but then there are days when it's humid, yeah, it's easier to grab something. So, I mean, it, uh, maybe maybe there is, but you can't sit here and undress guys on the field, right? Pitchers taking off their hats and checking gloves. I mean, everything. I mean, you can challenge everything. And granted, there's hundreds of camera angles. Hey, what was he doing? Mike grab, he rubbed his hair. Maybe he's, what are they going to do, make you get a haircut? You know, do you know what I mean? No, like I said, people are always anything. They'll grab something just because their hands are. Yeah, in. I mean, and now it's like you can't wear sunscreen now because... If you touch your arm or something to go to this rosin, it's gonna make a little sticky substance. So then, you're gonna get banged for that. So you know, there, it, it's it's gotten a little bit out of control. I mean, I understand what they're doing, but they they got to figure out a way to better to do it better. I guess to say. You think they're losing fans because of it? I don't know. I don't know. I think they might be losing fans just because of the lack of. Uh, excitement in games, I guess, you know? I mean, nobody wants to see pitching. Well, not everybody wants to see mm -hmm. pitching. So there are some purists that love to go watch a pitcher just straight dominate. Um, but they want to see the superstars do that. Um, you know, they, I, I want to see guys go out there and hit, 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 and then drop a bomb, stuff like that. Or, you know, depending on, you know, coming from a pitcher, I like to see the pitchers dominate. Um, but. I think the, the the fan thing is is a lot with uh, just the the uh, the times now. You know, the kids, everybody's on electronics. You know, they want instant gratification. Uh, they're they're not stimulated by by the baseball game as much as as we were back then. We didn't have nothing else to do. It was either you go watch a baseball game, you go outside and play, or you go inside and and hang out, maybe play Nintendo or something. You know, but now it's like everybody has it at their in their pocket where they can get on and. Be entertained that way. So, you, so growing up, baseball fan, you were. Who was your team growing up? I was actually a Rangers fan. Okay. Well, so, you, so my team, my team that I, because I would, my aunt lived up here in Grand Prairie, mm -hmm. so I would come up here in the summers and, and stay with her for a couple of weeks, and she'd bring me to ball games at the old ballpark. Um, but at home, living in South Texas, you know, we didn't have regional sports channels. You know, so our clo my closest team was Houston, but. You know, I didn't have like the cable package or anything like yeah. that where I could watch Houston baseball every time. And I don't even know if they had it, regional sports back then anyways. So I was always watching WGN and TBS. So I grew up watching the Cubs and the Braves. And I was kind of more, I always liked to watch the Braves a little bit more because, you know, they had Ron Gant, who was from Victoria, which was an hour away. So it was always kind of like, this guy is from here, so I'm going to root for that team. But I grew up mainly a Rangers fan, you know, Growing up. So you just, so would you say you're a National League guy or an American League guy? Girl, I mean, as far as your take on it, because I'm a National League guy. I'm a, I'm a Phillies fan. Grew up in so National League baseball. Yeah, I grew up watching it. I, uh, I mean, I guess I grew, I guess I watched more National League baseball. I've okay. watched WGN and TBS. Um, but I mean, I'm not sure if you're getting to the whole DH thing. Uh, but I, I, I don't know. I mean, I, I wouldn't, I wouldn't really say I'm a National League or American League guy either way. So that's what I was trying. I know now they went to the universal DH. Did you, and I, like you said, baseball purists like that that side of. And I know when when I was playing, they had, they had talked about the idea of when interleague had started when I was playing. But so if a national national league team would come here, you would play national league rules. So yeah. people fans would get to see the national league game, and then vice versa when they would go. Now it's just a universal DH. Do you? I mean, how many at bats did you ever end up having? I had two at bats. One my very first year, grounded out the second, and then uh, one with San Diego 
and same thing, grounded out to second. Um, my first time, I was excited. I was like, oh, I'll get the bat. <laughs> second time, I didn't want nothing to do with it. Like, man, I gotta go back out there and pitch. So, <clears throat> so I was just kind of standing there, my second at bat, I was like, man, I'm just gonna get out, whatever. I mean, they're not expecting me to hit. I gotta go back out and pitch. I'm not, that's my job is to go pitch. I don't wanna blow this lead. So then I got two strikes. I'm like, oh, shit, man, I don't, I don't wanna strike out. <laughs> I go, if I strike out, I'm gonna hear it, hear it nonstop from my buddies back home. So I was like, all right, so I'll just try to put it in play. I, you know, my whole goal was, I knew they were gonna pitch me outside. I knew they were gonna go fastballs away outside. So my whole goal was just try to go with it, try to flip it over to second baseman. So that's why the two ground outs to the second base kind of came about. See, Pete, when fans <clears throat> on, on probably see that side of it of where, you know, where, where guys are getting at bats, right? And you're sitting down there. Because usually, like I said, you'll go out and pitch, and, you're, you know, you're up fourth in the lineup. Hey, and they, they get a couple guys on or whatnot or, you know, and, or just, hey, you're going to hit. And you, you're sitting down there, right? What's your first thought when you're like, hey, Mike, grab a bat? First, like I said, the first time I'm like, oh, hell yeah, let's do this. <clears throat> I didn't have a helmet, I didn't have a bat, I didn't have batting gloves. So I'm like trying to find something like, hey, they, the, the equipment manager, like, dude, what do I do? What do I do? He's like, here, take this one. So the first helmet I put on is like on the top of my head, doesn't even fit. Like, man, give me a better helmet. <laughs> so then by the time I get all my stuff and get to go, you know, it, I'm basically on deck and I'm just out there excited. I'm like, you know, thinking, all right, here we go, here we go, here we go. Uh, and then once you step in, you're like, holy cow, this is a little, this is a little bit more difficult than, than it was, you know, that I remember. You know, my last at-bat was in high school. Uh, so, so, yeah, I mean, it, it was nerve-wracking. It was fun. It was nerve-wracking. Uh, and the, the crazy thing, it was I could see all the pitches coming out the hand. Mm -hmm. So I remember I, was, I faced Glennon and Rush, and, I, you know, I could see the, fa the, the yeah. fastball, the two-seamer, and then I, he threw me a slider, and out of his hand, I could see the spin of it, pick it up real easy. The thing is, the ball gets on you like this, and, and, that, and that's, that was the crazy thing, was, you know, I could see the pitch, I could recognize it, but it was just the reaction time. And the good thing was, I knew exactly where he was going. You know, I didn't have to worry about inside outs. I wasn't, I didn't have to cover both sides of the plate. You know, so I, I could see the difficulty in trying to get the barrel on the inside pitch, outside pitch, uh, up and down, and the different, the different pitches and stuff like that. So, um, in my, my, in my mind, I was like, this, this isn't that hard. But then <laughs> it can't be that hard. But then, you know, in reality, like when you start throwing the four pitch mix with, you know, different locations, then you can really see. Pitts was left handed, so that ball was running yeah, away from yeah, you, too. Yeah, yeah I, so I, I didn't have, so both my bats were against lefties. Oh, okay, so I didn't yeah. have to have the ball come in at me, like scaring the shit out of me. Yeah, yeah, you look like, oh, I got this, and all of a sudden it runs away from you, yeah. and then people were like, oh. But, but that's big, though, right? Because the, bull, the bullpen guys, right, they take, some guys can be. Right, it's like a, it's a competition, right? Because National League used to have when you were when you guys had pitchers batting practice, right? Mm -hmm. So it'd get out there, right, with competitions or whatnot. It was funny sitting there watching some guy like like Sheets. Oh yeah, my gosh, the worst swing ever. Uh, <laughs> that was terrible. He, so I had so I had on the same team. I had Sheets and Doug Davis. Yeah. Oh gosh, he was taller than you, wasn't he? Was we were about the same height. Okay, about the same height. Yeah, Doug. He because he what, wait did he did you bat you bat right handed? I bat right handed. I'm he batted right-handed also. Doug did too, yeah, because mm -hmm. he played. I think right, he might have been left-handed. He was know. a left-handed pitcher, yeah, yeah. but he told, yeah, because that's because Doug was here with 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 Texas when I was here, but just watching it. But you're right, some guys, but there are other guys. Uh, I remember like, Sheets saying that, that he didn't get the hit on his little league team. <laughs> <laughs> that's how bad of a hit it was. If he wasn't pitching, he wasn't playing at a, at a little league level. He. I, I just remember because you know it's and that that would be a point of where all right we get down there because right, pitchers on deck they'd see you who's coming all right they're gonna try it all right we'll just walk you the walk catcher yeah, walk them, and then we'll, yeah and then we'll we'll pitch to pitch to you right they see sheets all right you get up there and that, that's what they want to do right because they would look at you they know who's coming pitch around the guy just to put it on base and then let the pitcher come out making out yeah. and that's and that's that's what people you know they see but there are some guys like uh, Giovanni Gallardo. That could actually swing the bat. That you know could put the ball over the fence, but you you know you don't see Mass and Bumgarner. Same thing. Guys that could actually were they hitters growing up. I mean, I don't I don't know, but to be able to you know to, to put the swings on that they did, and then go out and like you said, continue to pitch. It's because there's funny. You get the closers up there. Some of the guys yeah. didn't have a clue. Yeah, <clears throat> and the crazy thing is, I, I I remember. I mean, I've, I've faced a good amount of pitchers. You know, playing in, in National League. Um, and sometimes those are the hardest guys to pitch to because you know all you got to do is, hey, just, just make your pitch, make your pitch. So now you're like overthinking it, over trying it, and you're like, next thing you know, you're, you're down 2-0 on, on a pitcher that you know you should be getting out. 
So I, I mean, a lot of times I would like, man, I'd rather face a pinch hitter or if it was a good, a good hitting pitcher, I, I don't mind facing that one. But you know, there's some guys that like, like facing myself, I'd be like, just, just freaking make a pitch and get this guy out of here. So then that gets in your head. Now you're trying to make a pitch. Now you're aiming the damn thing. And next thing you know, you're down 2-0. You're like, oh shit, here we go. And next thing you know, you walk the damn pitcher and you're like, God dog it. Because you know he wasn't going to swing. He was just going to yeah. stand there and take yeah, And that's exactly. the hardest part. But people are like, why couldn't you throw? It's not that easy. It's not that easy. It's not to, that easy. To, when you're, when you're fa- I, would, I would much rather face a, the number three, number four hole guy because I know I'm locking in and I'm trying to make my pitch than face that pitcher because it's like, I know he's not about to do nothing. All I got to do is spot it up. And then you start aiming. And that's, and that's the worst thing you can do as a pitcher is try to aim your pitch. You, you just got to let back go to your spot and, 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 and take it there. So, yeah, so when you're as a coach, you tell your kid, just let him hit it. And it's, 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 that's, it's, what that's what you're thinking, That's what right? you're thinking, yeah, that's what you're thinking. And, and, but it's, uh, you, know, you know in the back of your head, like, damn, don't say that, because now they're going to try to aim the ball. And, you know, so I always try to, hey, just rear back and fire it, rear back and fire it. If you're going to miss, miss going 100%. Don't try to sit there and aim the ball in the ball. I, like, I can't make adjustments if you're aiming the ball. That goes to, it shows you what happens when you start to think. Right, you start thinking too much. Oh gosh, I'm going to do this. I mean, you you see it. You used to see it with intentional walks, right? They'd have mm-hmm. guys. Oh man, trying to throw it, and then all of a sudden, shh, air mail because they're they're just trying to. You said they're trying to aim it as opposed to throwing it. Even balls to first base, right? You pitchers work on PFPs all the time. Uh, by the way, it's pitcher fielding plays where they just fielding ground balls. You guys go through it daily in spring training, and they're guys that can't throw it right from the mound. They, yeah, I mean, honestly, it, it's it's. Even the pitch out, it's a little bit, it's a, when you're sitting there and you're, in a, you're going through your wind up and your delivery and you're trying to make pitches, it's hard to next throw, get up and make a, a easy throw to the side of the, of the, of the, of the next batter's box, or whatever. You know, that, that's, that's a difficult throw to make. Um, why? Because you're going, you're, it's, it's a completely different throwing motion. You know, and it's sometimes the same thing with fielding the ground ball. It's just an easy throw. So that's why some guys, you see them throw that sucker from 85 feet away, 110 miles an hour, because they got to try to stay in their natural, their natural throwing instead of trying to aim it. Because once you start trying to get here and you start trying to aim it, that ball goes all over the place, dude. I've done it before. I've done it before, so I know the feeling. You can, you know that when it's coming out of their hand, as soon as you see the one where it, it takes off, it's one of those yeah. where they're like, oh, shit. Yeah. Yeah. A lot of times, if, I, if, if the ball is hit back to me, I would catch it, and I'd run to first base and just make this little easy throw because I wasn't about to try to make that, <laughs> that throw over there. I mean, it's a, it's a difficult throw to make. It, it's really, it really is. It is. Plus, you got everybody looking at you. It's the same thing. Even, you know, like you said, how about the ones where guys are all of a sudden a squeeze and they're going to – and you're right here at release point, and they're turned to bunt. I mean, what your thoughts are, gosh, don't lose this ball, or... So if... if I, I don't remember where I was taught this, but in situations where if, if somebody tried to squeeze on me, I was throwing the ball at the hitter. Yeah. You know, because they, they, they had two choices, either get hit or try to make a difficult bunt, and, and hopefully they're just going to foul it off. But, uh, but that was always my... I mean, it happened to, it happened to me three to four times... Where they try squeezing on me, right at you, dude. Yeah, I'm coming right at you. People, like, well, the people, as some people say, well, that's dirty. No, it's 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 it, it's, it, it's. They did a strategy of trying to, and that's your squeeze strategy. On me. And my strategy is, I'm gonna throw it at you because I know you're not gonna be able to square it up, you know. And hopefully, I'm trying to get you to foul it off. I mean, I'm not trying to necessarily hit you. I know you're gonna try to. Hopefully, you're gonna try to defend yourself and foul it off. Yeah, you're most most well. Most people don't know how. And pitchers are taught most of them. They're all usually taught how to bunt and hit. But some, you, know, you get some of those guys up there. I think uh, back in the day, guys would turn and face face square, square up. themselves up. So square basically, up. your 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 testicles and everything else, and your face are facing that. And it, you had nowhere to go. Right yeah. now, they're just it's just a turn out of the way because they they teach the slash and everything else. But I mean, that's just completely gone from the game of baseball now too. Yeah, I don't think I've ever seen it. Hell, the bunt's almost gone from the. From I, the I know, and that's that's what I mean. You don't you don't see that part of it. And like you said, you're, I like you know you try and teach your kids to do it, how to hit behind guys. I mean, guy, there are still guys that do. Heck, I think we were talking last week. Miggy's three thousand hit was hitting behind a runner, right? Mm-hmm. I mean, that's easy money to do it that way. But now it's just, but that's the fun part of the game, watching that stuff, watching bunt plays happen, and then it just becomes a circus, right? Sometimes guys run in the line, um, and they'll just trying to throw around them and then whoosh, gone mm-hmm. and it's but it, it that, but that's the stuff that I think is more entertaining than right than just guys just 
fielding ground balls and it's playing the game. It's playing the game. You using your strategy, um, you know, and, and it's not just trying to bang it out, bang it out. It's let's work this, let's work it. And it's there's kind of a beauty to it. Yeah, there's yeah. Kind of a beauty to it. And the, the art, of, it some guys have perfected to an art where, um, you know, the drag bunt lefties doing drag bunts mm -hmm. and stuff, being able to push bunts and that's just fun. Like you said, the guy you need base runners now. It's a couple of, I don't know, a couple I mean, years it's ago. It's kind of like how NBA has gone to the three point shot. You know, it's live and die by the three. Now it's kind of become live and die by the long ball, somewhat. You know, let's try to let's try to hit a double or a homer. You know, instead of you know, drive the hole, drive the hole, drive the hole, hit that three. Now, you know, I always said, hey, do good things, and then karma will reward you. You know, let's let's bunt. You know, if you're struggling, bunt. That might, that might get you going. You know, karma will, will reward you. You know, so I always try to hey, just stay small, stay small, stay small. And then all of a sudden you're going to have that double. You're going to hit the home run and stuff like that. You know, but you can't just try to keep on going out there and trying to, to, to go big fly or trying to keep, try to keep trying to hit the three-pointer or whatever it may be. So the strategy basically, it seemed, uh, you say it's gone from basketball side really and then baseball, three-pointers, you know, three home runs. I mean, you still see it in, in football. There's a strategy to it. But I mean, is that what we're just getting away from? Like you said, just all right. We need an eight-run homer. Go hit it. But that's what I think yeah. a lot of guys are trying to do, yeah. right? Instead of opposed to getting on base. And I know, you know, they talk about unwritten rules, right? Of baseball, guys got thrown a no-hitter, but you're down two nothing, and or something. Well, somebody bunting for a hit, and they're they're pissed off. I'm trying to win the game, man. You know, I mean, if it's a, a five-zero, seven-zero, something like that, maybe maybe it's a little bit different. Um, but yeah, like you know. 2-0, I mean, a bunt and a homer. But guys are getting pissed off in. about that stuff these yeah, days. Yeah, yeah. I mean, hell, they got pissed off when we played about that, you know? I mean, I'm, I'm a fan of doing everything the correct way, but at the same time, you know, some of these things, it's not, it's, somebody said this shouldn't be done that way. It's not, is that the correct way? No, it's not the correct way, but it's just that somebody said this a long time ago, you know, some salty dude said this a long time ago, so that's the way it's supposed to be now. Um, you know, I'm, I'm okay with with some of the way, some of the things, the way the game's changed a little bit. Um, but you know, I, I do think you still got to play the game the right way. Yeah, and it's you know, like the trash can thing with during the World Series that's or what? Right way. No, no. But yeah. there's guys, right? You'd have guys that say, "Hey, we got the signs. If we yeah. look one way, and it's but it's hard trying to. All right, I see you there." But then I've also got to pick up a, an aspirin from 60 feet at the same time of knowing. Yeah. Grant, that, yeah, that's one. Hey, he's got the signs. But other than that, now you know, banging on trash cans or, or this and that. But that, that's just a part of it. Trying to steal it. signs, that's right? What, yeah. You, you the, know. Yeah. The, the, from second base or whatever it may be, you know, that that, that steal sign stealing, that was okay with it. You know, if you're gonna if you're smart enough to pick it up that way, good kudos to you, man. Yeah. You know, or you know, um, the. Uh, Pitchers tipping pitches, right? Pitchers Glo tipping pitches. Right? Different you know, hands. And, I, and that's, that's something, I, even now with my 11-year-olds, I, I try to teach them that. I'm like, hey, whenever he, you can see when he's throwing his off-speed, you can see his glove go here or here like this. Mm -hmm. I said, so so react. I said, pay attention. There's little things that you can pick up that can help you, you know, throughout the, throughout your, throughout the at-bat or whatever it may be. You know, but, you know, if you're just sitting there jacking around the, in the dugout, you know, once you get up there, you know, you, you're going to be clueless. You know, you're just trying to react, I pick up, figure out what's going on, um, you know, and, and, you know, I'm always trying to figure out, you know, that's something I learned from, from, you know, I never knew about the whole tipping pitches until I got to pro ball, mm -hmm. um, you know, and then I started learning how to, how to, how to pick up on stuff like that. Um, and it helped me because I, I mean, I'm sure at some point I was tipping my pitches, you know, so that helped me. Okay, let's, let's make sure we're doing the same thing every single time, every single time. Um, to not to not do that, uh, but yeah, I mean, there, there's, you know, sign stealing is, is an art. You know, it's not it shouldn't be done like you said with the trash cans, the digital stuff, anything like that. But if you can figure out a way to to do it the right way, hey, kudos to you, man. Right, because they were because you were playing when they would go, you know, they go with man on second, they go what outs plus one or plus two type mm -hmm. stuff. So people mm -hmm. would. And then that, that's how they, that's how you guys would would do the communication. Now, I mean, you see mound visits, and everybody's got their hand on their face, trying not, trying not. To, I mean, is that, that's where it's come to. I mean, people are. Yeah. I, I granted, I know there's different camera angles, but yeah, I remember. I remember. <laughs> I think it was a Chad Moeller. You know, it was my rookie year, 
And I mean, I was used to just like the one first sign, second sign, last sign, stuff like that. And he starts touching all this stuff, and I'm like, holy smokes, like what is going on? So I call time, and I'm like, dude, what, like, what are you doing? He goes, oh man, it's just, you know, it's, it's just phantom. I go, well, what the hell is the sign? He goes, you don't know, you don't know the touches? And I'm like, no. <laughs> so, <laughs> so he kind of explained to me, that, all right, well, let's go back to ones and twos for now. And then afterwards, he taught me, like, hey, if I go right here, this one, you know, this might be a fastball. And, I was like, all right, let's just keep it simple for now, man. Because you're right, you get out, you're already having enough to think about. Where am I gonna? Yeah. All of a sudden, like, that was three touches plus one, that makes four. So what am I throwing? Yeah. And that, but now they've got. Um, I was watching a game the other day. Somebody had it. Uh, it was a Mets who I don't even know who's catching had to on their chest guard. The where and the then the flicker thing. They have little yeah, wrist things. Yeah, yeah. Stuff. But then the pitcher, took, whoever was pitching, took his hat off, and he's like, I can't hear. I, it was almost like he was the mic'd up linebacker giving plays <laughs> out there, and he's like, I can't. I can't because the fans, because I can't hear. I don't know what, so he's pushing his button like it's in it. I mean, is that really what it's come to? I don't understand Did, it. I don't understand it. I mean, I, <laughs> I guess, I guess, but I mean, I don't, I don't know. I, I, I'm, I'm very, that's part of the whole thing. It was just, just stay traditional. Just give your signs, you know, learn how to do it correctly. You know, um, I don't, I don't, I, I mean, I guess there, the technology has come so far that, they have to do it, maybe. You know, maybe maybe there's. I don't see how they can be able to steal signs from the dugouts anymore, especially after everything that happened recently. Um, but yeah, I mean, figure out some touches, signs, go that way. You know, I mean, it, it, I'm not. I don't think it's slowing down the game. I think I just think it's more weird than anything. I mean, you'll see, I mean, our at our level, you know, you hear they you know they get the wrist uh, we, have, the, we have one team in our in our age group that. Three six one four yeah, seven six, like, and everybody's looking at their thing. I, next I'm like, time I'm gonna yell bingo when people are out here doing this, and then all of a sudden they all look at their. Uh, even the pitchers are wearing. I'm like, first of all, you got to take all that yeah, off. Yeah, everything got come on. Like, how, I, how can you wear a wristband? It is, that's not legal. You know, you can't wear a wristband on the mound. And, and that's what I don't get. It's just that. The, but now the, they're now they're okay, and some of the organizations are okay, and oh, they can wear wristbands. I'm like, yeah, that's not part. They're of taking it. The, they're taking the creativity and mm -hmm. the kids being able to think. On their own and be able to. So we we don't. We've I had a coach come to, a couple years ago. I said you and I said no, absolutely not. They need to learn to think. So you know they'll call. You know they'll fastballs, curveballs, and they'll go by location, just relay it to the catcher to understand that they've got to get used to that, as opposed to all right. Well, let me see this guy right because it has every batter mm -hmm. and then it has every pitch and every sequence. And you're right. At, at some point you're going to need a scroll to all right. Where is he <laughs> highlighted? And that but right and that's what it comes to. But yeah, yeah. I've always wondered what. You sit over there, yeah. Eight, four, twelve. What are you? What yeah. are you yelling? I mean, is it that big of a secret that you're that you can't? You're trying to hide, you know, eleven-year-old baseball. I mean, most of this is just, I man, just talent versus talent. Just go play the game. You know, let them learn. Let them have fun. You know, I mean, I don't, I don't get, I don't get that part of it. You know, and it's funny because I mean, we call them area codes. You know, the, the coach, we call them area codes. <laughs> It is every six four three one seven seven. I'm like, man, what are you doing? Are you or or they've had. I think one time they tried to run. I've heard you know pick off plays. We they run. We run daylight, right? Yeah, on yeah. A, on a set. I had one. We were playing, and I heard one of the coach yell, "Sunshine!" And I, I knew exactly <laughs> what he's. I go, are you, is, "Is it really that stupid for you to be able to say sunshine?" I, Really, just say daylight, right? I mean, it's but that's what I mean. They're oh, I can be trickier than you and and reinvent this whole process yeah. as yeah. opposed to. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Don't just don't reinvent the wheel, man. Just just stay basic. Stay, you know, do what you do. And but it's and it's fun though. Those kids, it's it's fun doing it. But like you said, sometimes it gets to be mm -hmm. it too much, yeah. right? Especially the level that we played at, and, and hearing parents and what they're saying, and you just and you just and you just. I mean, do you, is it? It's not even worth engaging, really, is it? To even say. Because most of them, it's probably something they just Googled. See, Google says that it should be this, and that's and that's what I'll yell. So if I have parents, I usually don't say anything unless they say something to one of my boys or something, and I'll just say, "Hey, just go, just go ask Google, since they know all the answers <laughs> for you." Just to, right? Because you get out there and people just they think that they. <laughs> yeah, everybody, everybody knows everything, man. That's that's it's the armchair quarter, the armchair quarterbacks. Even know? like I said, even dealing with soccer, same thing. It's yeah. just yeah, oh, dude. Soccer might be worse. I'm not sure what's worse, soccer or baseball. I don't know. I've seen they've they've canceled games for soccer parents getting into a fight with each other. Yeah. Is it really? Is it really come to all that stuff? And yeah. you just 
just go sit down and enjoy the game, man. Quit. Here's the thing. Parents are trying to live through their kids, you know, and just go let, let your child go play. Let them learn. Let them have fun. You know, if, if you want to get technical and stuff like go get lessons. Go do some side work. You do some extra work. Once it's game time, let them play. Let them enjoy it. Are there, are there, are there going to be bad calls? Yes, there's going to be bad calls. It's part of it. There's bad calls in the major leagues. There's bad calls in the NBA. There's bad calls in the NFL. You know, the only difference is they get to review it. You know, so I mean, it, 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 it's just let them enjoy themselves. You know, well, I go to my daughter's games, and you know, yes, she gets beat to the ground. As long as she gets back up and not hurt, hey man, it's part of it. You know, I mean, take the foul. You know, some some fouls are harder than others. Mm-hmm. You know, some are a little bit cheap, and if there if it's a cheap one, then maybe I might say something. You know, offsides. You know, it's kind of like it is what it is sometimes. Now, if it's blatant and it's, it's, it becomes a reoccurring thing, then I might kind of chirp up a little bit. But even then, it's like you know, say it in a respectful way. You know, there's there's certain ways to speak to officials, and and, and not just sit there and you know yell at them and, and try to blast them. You know, if you if you kind of say it in the correct way. Most of them, not all of them, most of them handle it okay, you know, but yeah, parents, I mean, not all, but some parents have have really hurt youth sports. Yeah, I don't, uh, I usually walk, I I, I don't sit, I walk around just because I just, one, I like to hear sometimes of what, you know, some of the other, not our parents, but other, other teens and what people are, just because you sit there and you you wonder what, what that, what, what do you, (laughs) why, why? It's it's that or the parents officiate the game, right? It's a uh, handball and then oh, blow the whistle, and all it is is in the coach. Hey, don't let the fans dictate the game. You dictate, right? And that's and there are some that have come out. Middle school basketball this year, a referee, a parent was complaining about something, or the kid was doing something bad, and he, and the parent had said something. The guy turned around, looked, he goes, he goes, this is my court. If you don't like my court, you can leave. Yeah, a good after the game, if the official, the boy had, I think he had said something. The dad and the son walked up to him, and I don't know what was exchanged, but that's the respect that they get. Now yeah. it's just, hey, it's, you know, now it's just, all right, you're out of here, this and that, as opposed to, hey, but at least you see being polite about, hey, ask for help, right? That's, and, but if then they come back, then that's when you're just kind of like, okay, what do we do? You know, how do we, but there's no, there's no agreeing to disagree anymore either, right? Yeah. It's, it's yeah. my kid's better than yours, and, and uh, mine does no wrong. We call, I call it the Tom Brady rule, right? <laughs> right? It, it's not a foul on my kid, but it is on your kid, and that's that's what you're that's what you're dealing with. And it's a hard it is a hard job to be an official, with whatever it is. Yeah. And I, you know, we were talking about this earlier. I respect them for it, but also act like you want to be out there helping. Yes, that's people. that's a big thing. That's a big thing. If you're going to be out there, don't just go out there and collect the check on the officiating. You know, don't just go out there and collect check. I mean, be, be out there and, and, and respect, you know, respect what you're doing. You know, respect the kids that you're, that you're officiating for. Um, and, and do the best job to your ability. I mean, are you going to make every call correct? No, of course not. And I, under, I understand that. I understand it. But at the same time, like you said, don't be lazy. You know, be out there and want to be out there. And Almost, help. Yeah, and help. And help. And don't be out there just to collect your, your 40, 50 bucks, whatever it is, an hour. And, and get through it, you know. I, mean, I, I know I've seen plenty of those guys, you know. But then they have some other ones that are, that, that you know, take take they they want to do a good job, mm-hmm. you know. And, and those are the ones that we, that me personally, like I'm able to get along with. I, I joke with them and, and have a good time with them. They're le- they're 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 learning, but they're also teaching. At the, like a teaching moment, if something happens, if telling. Well, why was that foul called this way, right? You know, and, and they're able to explain, like, hey, hey, perfect, I get it. Hey, I may have missed it. perfect. That's what you want to hear, right? Yeah. Making the mistake, understanding. Because then that, te- one, it teaches them that they're able to, to say, I, I made a mistake. But two, it teaches the kid as well, okay, now it's, you know, explain to me. Because most of the time it's just a foul. And, Wait, what, what just happened, right? <laughs> they, don't, they don't explain it, right? So then nobody's benefiting yeah. from it. And that, especially at this age, they're, they, they, they're learning, right? It's, it's, a, it's a learning process. But if you're, like you said, if you're not doing your job, you're not helping anybody out. Yeah. And then you're irritating everybody else around you. And then we have to play peacemaker and everything else. Yeah. So it's, you're right there. You're able to have that conversation just saying, hey, not yelling at them, but pulling them aside saying, hey, what, you know, what are your thoughts? This is what I say. Okay, I get it. Yep. That's all it is, mm-hmm. right? Because I, 
Yeah, because right, it's usually it's what one. Well, I heard this guy does this, this, and this until you actually sit down and go. No, I, he explained it to me. Oh, okay. I don't have any reason to gripe anymore. Yeah. Right. So, um, but no, that's just like you said. That's just the stuff that we deal with these days, anyway. So I mean, it's right. <laughs> we're we're right in the throes of it. It is what it is. Right. And you're dealing with high school sports too, right? Yeah, yeah. So my daughter, yeah, she's a she's a, just finishing up her freshman year. Um, you know, so I'm just getting into, getting into the whole high school. She plays soccer. She only plays soccer. So uh, I made the mistake of just letting her specialize. I should have. She enjoyed it, and I was kind of like, all right, we'll play this. I should have pushed her a little bit more into basketball, volleyball, and stuff like that. But whatever. Um, but yeah, so I'm just kind of starting to get my taste of high school sports with her. Uh, she had a she has a good successful freshman year, um, but now we're you know she, she I think she's learning now. Okay, what I got to do to 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 you know, be on varsity and stuff like that, the dedication. I mean, we go to Keller High, so it, it's, you know, it, it's tough to be, you know, a varsity-style varsity player um, with as many students as we have, you know. So uh, she's, she's learning what it takes, the dedication and stuff like that. So, you know, we're looking forward to the next three years on that one. Is she, gonna, is she starting to sprout yet? No. So I don't know if she's going to grow anymore, man. She's, she's, uh, she's about 5'4". Um, hopefully she gets another one or two inches, hopefully. Um, but, you know, we'll see. So she'll be Shelly's height? Yeah, see, that's, uh, that's the problem. My yeah. wife's 5'2". Yeah. I'm 6'5". So there's... Is that you know, and I, and be? I'm the outlier of my whole family, so I don't know if that gene, that height gene is strong enough to, uh, to, to, to work on them. Maybe we get down to Junior, I think. He's even smaller. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but but I, like I said, I hit my growth spurt after my freshman year. So hopefully he'll at some point he'll he'll get a little stretch in him. So so hoping for it. Yeah. So um, last thing before we end, I know we always talk we always talk smack. You're wearing your Cowboys hat in here. <laughs> I want to I want to burn that thing down. <laughs> they burn that thing down every time I see your your Cowboy hat or your truck driving around. I know it's you. I just we're gonna run you off the road. So <laughs> they play Christmas Eve. Yeah. Here mm -hmm. this year. Yep. So we got to. Went to figure something out here because it's it all looks good on paper, right? Right now. Yeah, I mean, I, I've I've learned with the Cowboys. I, I've not to get my hopes up. The past couple <laughs> years have just been, uh, uh, I don't know, man. I, I, I they've really, I don't even say humbled me. It's just more of like, oh, okay, it is what it is. The Cowboys are who they are. Um, so like. Last year, I went into the whole season like I'm not no expectation. Every year, I'm like, oh, look, we look great on paper. We look great on paper. We look great on paper. And then when it comes out, I'm like, man, these guys suck, you know. So the last year, I was like, you know what? No expectations. No expectations. And going great, going great. And then kind of just, it, you know, playing in the East, you know, that that that's a totally different story on that one. But uh, yeah, this year I'm like, you know what, man, y'all got y'all got to. Prove it You're gonna set your bar really low. Set my bar low so I don't get disappointed. <laughs> set my bar low so I don't get disappointed. But what's gonna happen is they're gonna have a great regular season and then we're gonna get to the playoffs and it's gonna be the same thing as always. It's so. a, it's amazing though how how just sports in general. But that's that's part of the fun of just of being on here. So we'll be we'll have to uh, we'll have to put, put a little we'll a wager on see how see how it ends up. And who knows? It's that. I mean it's there's still moving parts right now. I was just watching today. They were OTAs or something or starting whatnot. So it's yeah. Should be interesting to see. You know, it's oh, they sign somebody. All right, their odds go up. It, it, yeah. You know how it is. They've got to, they've got to play it out and see. You never know because you know these guys bring them in. And all of a sudden, dudes are getting hurt. Football, and, football is a, a truly well. I guess now it's a what, seventeen game season. You know, so it, it truly is an every week thing because with injuries and stuff. I mean, one little thing and your season you down the dump. So it's a it, it football is a very fluid sport. Very fluid sport. Yeah, and it's it is it's fun to watch, but like you said, it is, it is oh, dude. quite frustrating to say the least. It, it, it was, it's terrible. Your emotions are like this. You know, you're 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 at a high one week, and then you're like you get brought back to reality, and you're like, man, maybe they ain't that good. You know, so but yeah, it, it's that's that's the joy of being a Cowboys fan. I love it. I've I've always said I love turmoil being here. So. <laughs> Well, say, oh, Philly ain't that much better. I, mean, I know. They just have one good year. And I, I, I know. That's what they say. What was, what was, I always, because, you know, you get this time, you, football season comes around, they start throwing those memes out here, and they were talking about, what was one of them about Tom Brady's daughter 
I was wearing more Super Bowl rings or something. The Cowboys had wins or the playoffs or something the last decade <laughs> yeah. or whatnot. So I, I just love it because it's you know because Cowboys fan and Eagles fan, we just love going back and forth yeah. and stuff. So that's that's the beauty of it. Uh, but yeah, once football season starts, you know it's just back and forth, yeah. back and forth. So yeah, no doubt. Uh, well, I appreciate you being on here today, and uh, guys, we thank you guys for everything for visiting with us, and we look forward to seeing you again next week. Yeah.